With the consent of the body, I move that we consider Senate Bill Numbers 2252, 2614, 2615, 1536, 1691, 1725, 2616, 355, 2617, 2618, and 2619. So move, Madam President. Is there any objection? Hearing none. Motion is approved. May we With ask the, the Secretary to read the, the title of the measures? With the permission of the body, the Secretary will read only the title of the bills without prejudice to inserting into the record the whole text thereof. Senate Bill Number 2252, Pawai Lake Protected Landscape Act. Senate Bill 2614, Aurora Memorial Protected Landscape Act. Senate Bill Number 2615, Mount Sawtooth Protected Landscape Act. Senate Bill Number 1536 expanded Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland of 2022. Senate Bill Number 1691 San Francisco Protected Landscape Act. Senate Bill Number 1725 Alibi Haban Protected Landscape and Seascape Act. Senate Bill Number 2616 Mount Masaraga Protected Landscape Act. Senate Bill Number 355 Taklong and Tando Group of Islands Natural Park Act. Senate Bill Number 2617, Panaon Island Protected Landscape Act. Senate Bill Number 2618, Mount Gutom Protected Landscape Act. Senate Bill Number 2619, Sultan Naga de Maporo Protected Landscape and Seascape Act. Thank you, Madam President. At this juncture and with the consent of the body, I move that we recognize the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change to deliver an omnibus sponsorship speech, Senator Cynthia Villar. Senator Cynthia Villar, Chairman of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources and Climate Change, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As your chairperson of the Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change, I am pleased to sponsor today the 11 bills declaring ecological leave vital areas in the Philippines as additional protected areas under our existing National Integrated Protected Area System as amended. At the time when we are finally taking notice of our protected areas as a part of our heritage and there is substantial clamor for more effective product protection, as we have seen recently for the Chocolate Hills National Monument, I take this opportunity to affirm my commitment to the country's protected area system. Prior to the enactment of Republic Act Number no. 7586, known as the National Integrated Protected Area System of 1992 or the NIPAS Act, we had multiple declared national parks whose protection were basically just on paper. NIPAS rationalized this by establishing management boards, funding mechanism, recognizing ancestral domain owners, and according rights to long-term migrant communities whose incomes are de derived only from the protected areas. 13 ecologically important areas were established through individual legislation, while the rest continued to be managed as initial components of the system. It was in the 17th Congress when I was installed chairperson of the Senate Environment Committee when I worked on the passage of Republic Act Number no. 111. 038, known as the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System of 2018, or the E-NIPAS Act, revised the original based on the experiences of nearly two decades and included the legislation of 94 more protected areas. And during the previous 18 Congress, we were able to pass into the law seven legislative measure declaring seven individual sites as protected areas under the mantle of the INIPAS Act. This brought the country to a total legislated protected areas to 114 or a total area of 4.4 million hectares. Upon enactment, this laws automatically shifted the lands of the public domain to the classification of national park, no longer subject to private titling under the Public Land Act. Since the controversy surrounding the Chocolate Hills came to light, Allow me to take this opportunity to clarify that protected areas are not forfeitures or confiscation of existing private title. When we legislate titled lands 
inside the boundaries remain titled. However, the activities of title holders inside protected areas are already constrained by the rules of the system and the management plan of each specific area. The development of such land requires rigorous checking by the protected area management office and to see to it that it enhances the protected area's assets and support the objective of the management plan. There would be protected area management board or PAMBIS that will give clearance if, not, if these standards are not met. Those exceptions are not the rule and do not warrant a harsh judgment on the entire system. What it does call for a review of the PM protected area management operations and the clearance process across the board and a warning to PAMBIS, possibly even rebumps when these wrong decisions are frequent. It also calls for better and more strategic enforcement by the DNR and its regional and management offices in a handful of protected areas with a lot of private lands, they have barely scratched the surface. They are lacking in enforcement of the law against illegal structures in public lands, so expecting enforcement in title land is even more challenging. If the restrictions are so light, so tight that they constitute a taking of private property for public use and it is warranted, for example, to save the nesting tree of an endangered species on a private land, there are two options. We can exercise the power of eminent domain or if the private land owners proves to be more capacitated than government to enhance this asset by protecting the nest and establishing habitat sensitive facilities, then government can engage them to do its work. Having, having given this clarification, I hope we can pull together to pass the following bills to protect the specific sites indicated. For Region 1, it's SB 2252 under Committee Report Number 86, referring to the Pauai Lake Protected Landscape in the province of Ilocos Norte as an important migratory bird stop over whose ecosystem caters better to certain birds, notably cormorants. In Region 3, uh, SB 2614 under Committee Report 239, referring to the Aurora Memorial Protected Landscape in Aurora Province, which serves as the Middle corridor critical in conserving the entire Sierra Madre range, so important for the entire Luzon Islands biodiversity and protection against extreme weather events. And number three, uh, SB 2203 under community report number 240 referring to Mount Sotooth protected landscape in Tarlac province. In the National Capital Region, SBN 1536 under Committee Report Number 87, referring to the expanded Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park in the cities of Las Piñas and Paranaque, which will ensure protected area integrity by the inclusion of the marine habitat deemed absolutely necessary to deliver the required biodiversity objectives of the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park, including the national management of its mangroves, the rational management of its mangroves and mudflats, and as a critical stopover for migratory birds. In Region 4A, SBN 1691, under Committee Report Number 88, referring to the San Francisco Protected Landscape, and SBN 1725 under committee report number 89 referring to the Ali Bihaban protected landscape both in Quezon province featuring the unique biodiversity of the province. In region 5 SB 2616 under committee report 241 referring to the Mount Masaraga protected landscape in Albay province for serving as a critical watershed, as well as a sharp top 
inactive volcano in the Bicol River Basin to conserve endemics throughout the basin. In Region 6, SBN 355 under Committee Report Number 90 referring to Taklong and Tandog Group of Islands Natural Park in Guimaras Province, which serves as the representative of small archipelago, archipelagos with endemics that speciate in isolated and semi-isolated habitats. In Region 8, SB 26117, under committee report number 242, referring to Panaon Island Protected Seascape in southern Leyte Province, which is among the 50 reefs globally named for resilience from climate threats and its protection will ensure its 50% had hard coral cover and high marine biodiversity, including whale sharks, can be managed. In Region 9, SB 2618 under Committee Report 243, referring to the Mount Gutom Protected Landscape Act in Sambuanga del Norte for its pterocarp forest and mossy and pine forest at its summit that hosts multiple threatened species of flora. And the last one is in Region 10, SB 2619, under the committee report 244, referring to the Sultan Naga Dimaporo protected landscape and seascape in Lanao del Norte, which is an important model site representative for managing limology and marine biodiversity, specifically microbenthic fauna, along with socio-cultural studies and their interaction with what is halal. It is of paramount importance that we do better in our protected area system for our own good. The resilience of our habitat, climate mitigation, the continued existence of our iconic and endemic species, and the ecosystem services that protected areas provide. On top of this, we have international commitment of the Philippine government under Ramsar Convention, the World Heritage Convention, the Convention on Migratory Species, and the ASEAN Agreement on Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, among others. In 2022, the Convention on Biological Diversity Conference of Parties issued the Canning Montreal Global Framework on Biodiversity Target 3, target three of which is to ensure and enable that by 2030, at least 30% of terrestrial, inland water, and of coastal and marine areas, especially areas of particular importance for biodiversity and ecosystem functions and services are effectively conserved and managed through ecologically representative, well-connected, and equitably governed systems of protected area. Our country stands at the verge of this target. With a small land area, we host an inviolable number of species that evolve right here in our archipelago and can be found nowhere else. It is therefore our patriotic as well as global duty to ensure that we take all the steps necessary to fulfill these commitments. The provision of these bills are in line with the INAIPAS Act of 2018, but our site is specific. We hope that our colleagues will enrich our discussion during the period of interpolation and may introduce amendments in case any specific provision are still necessary to protect each of these unique habitat will come to light. With this, Mr. President and dear colleagues, I hope that the proposed legislation be unanimously considered and approved by this August chamber. Isang makalikasang hapon sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat. Maraming maraming salamat to our um, sponsor and the chairman of our environment. I would like to be associated uh, with the permission of the sponsor. Co-sponsorship speech, may I request the majority leader to have it inserted into the record. And as the good sponsor knows, 
In the first INIPAS omnibus, we had 94 protected areas in different parts of the country, both marine and terrestrial and wetlands as well. And I was happy to principally author that and a good sponsor as a chair of the committee sponsored it as well. And with the uh, present protected areas, may this representation be made co-author and co-sponsor as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Do Madam I hear President. an affirmative uh, message? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. We are privileged to have you as co-author of Thank the you bills. very much. And just a query from uh, Mr. Majority Leader. How many more protected areas are pending with the executive, with the DNR, that have not yet been sponsored for various reasons? Just so that we know, because we know that there's been a long delay of transmittal from the executive to uh, the Senate. There are still 121 initial components that haven't oh. been proclaimed as protected area by legislation. Yes, uh, understood. Uh, thank you for bringing that into the record because the more than 100 uh, which have initial components and need to be protected have long been crying out for protection for decades. And it is only in the past few years that we have allowed the omnibus sponsorship. So thank you to the sponsor for that. And we will help you to ensure that these are all sponsored when we return to session on April 29 onwards, with the permission of the sponsor. Yeah, I just want to make a <clears throat> manifestation that there are 121 that has not been uh, legislated. And there are new 13 presidential proclamation for additional 13. So it's 134. 134. And uh, just to be clear, these are from way back 20 years ago. It was the 13. Then we did the 94, which you sponsored and I authored. Then after that, we have piecemeal small omnibus and the 121 plus the 13 will be forthcoming on April 29 onwards. Thank you very much, um, Senator Villar, Majority Leader. Yes, Madam President. Madam President, uh, our distinguished colleague from the great uh, province of Bohol and the uh, Davao region, Senator Bato de la Rosa, is seeking the floor. I move that he be recognized, Madam President. Uh, we recognize the Senator from Davao and Bohol and perhaps uh, after he has made his statement, we would like to hear his message about the pending uh, issue that cries out for help on the Chocolate Hills issue. But thank you. Proceed, please. <laughs> you, thank you, Mr. Madam President. You are putting me in a spotlight. Huh? Uh, but anyway, uh, with the permission of the good sponsor, uh, may this uh, representation be made as an omnibus co-author um, of uh, this uh, uh, bills under consideration. And uh, uh, my... Uh, Sponsorship, uh, sponsorship uh, speech be inserted into the records of the Senate. Thank you Mr. very Amada much, President. our Senator from Mindanao, and uh, it is our privilege to have you as co-author. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Madam President, are you satisfied with the gentleman's, gentleman from Bohol's uh, statement with regard to your query? Uh, uh, please President. proceed. Please proceed, so it's okay. uh, Mr. Chocolate Hills. Thank you. Yes. But perhaps... Uh, <laughs> the, I, I see the similarity, yes. Yeah, ma ma no. Madam President, <laughs> Madam President, I, I just love to... Huh? I just love to eat, uh, to eat uh, chocolates, but chocolate I don't destroy hill. Uh, hill chocolate only. hills. I want to preserve the chocolate hills. Mm. I only very want good. to eat chocolate. Yeah. Uh, very and there's good, just uh, one chocolate hill. That is affected, Madam President. In fact, they were, they were saying the owners were surprised uh, one day when they woke up that there are chocolate hills around them. So uh, that, that's uh, the reason. Thank you very much to the gentleman from Davao and Bohol for co-sponsoring and uh, giving your support to the sponsor, chair of the Environment Committee. And thank you for joining the clamor to protect our already legislated protected areas as well. Yes, we take note of the manifestation of the majority leader, which clearly is unthinkable and totally unbelievable. Un unbelievable. Yes, yes. but uh, that uh, is will be taken up in another uh, forum. Thank you. For, for sure, Madam President, that's a serious matter, and uh, uh, there's an overwhelming clamor from this uh, August chamber to look into it and uh, ensure that uh, 
heads will roll, Madam President. Madam President, to uh, allow our colleagues to study further the measure, I move that we suspend consideration of the aforementioned Senate bills. I so move, Madam President. Uh, so the uh, sponsorship is uh, therefore uh, suspended Thank for you. future consideration. Thank you. Madam President, at this juncture,